The third hindrance to revival and spiritual awakening is the attempt to explain away sin in terms of psychology. Sin is considered to be a maladaptive behavior. This contradicts the biblical condition of the human heart. The heart is deceptive above all things and it is exceedingly corrupt. Who can know the heart? Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. The bad news gets better when we understand that there is none righteous, not even one single person on the face of this entire earth. Romans 3 and verse 10. The importance of defining sin, really making clear as to what sin really is in relationship to God, the more we understand and are able to clearly define the spirit of sin, that which we have departed from God's divine prerogative, the better we're able to understand the hearts of men and women and the condition to which they carry themselves beneath the canopy of disobedience and disrespect in, in relationship to God. Sin is clearly the problem in the human heart. It is not a maladaptive, psychological, idiosyncratic ideology. Sin is the condition of the heart of those who seek to do what we want to do and not what God would have us to do. It is outright, blatant disrespect and disobedience. Welcome again. This is Art Loggins Sr., President and CEO of Art Loggins Ministries, a ministry that is designed by God's design to equip the whole church with the whole gospel to reach the whole world. Equipping people to equip people, making disciples for Jesus Christ with a message of mercy from the master that we might understand what it means to really replicate the kind of obedience that God demands and requires, that requires an awakening. So welcome again to Awaken. In chapter 12, Awaken, ignited by the power of a prayer. And chapter 12 deals with the aspect of defining sin. God said to me, once we define sin, then we're able to find the solution. you never be able to find the solution until you have identified the problem. There is an enemy, there's a critter in the house, and that critter in the house of the heart of men is nothing more than the critter of disobedience and sin. You've got to deal with that. You've got to flush out the critter. And when that happens, you'll be able to understand what to do. Several years ago, I remember in, in one occasion when we heard noise uh, that was going on in a house I was staying in, visiting on one occasion, a very beautiful house, and a lot of noise, and we didn't know exactly where it was coming from, and we noticed that there was something scurrying around upstairs in the loft. We peered into the loft and we looked in and we saw these, these glowing eyes and we came to find out it was a family of raccoons. Immediately, we called the pest control company to help us to carefully remove the mother and her little raccoons from the loft. Beloved, in every one of our hearts, there are critters that are running in our heart that causes us to seek to be disobedient to God. And until we deal with that, we will never be awakened. We will never experience the power. We'll never be able to experience the authority. We will never be able to really appreciate what God is doing. Until we define sin and call sin what it is, it is outright disobedience and disrespect 
for the things of God. It is not a psychological condition. It is a spiritual condition that is predicated on the heart of the men and women of God. It is a condition that we just don't want anybody to tell us what to do. We want to run our own show, do what we want to do, and yet say that we belong to the kingdom of God. Beloved, that isn't true. We have got to submit ourselves to him and allow him to speak to us. And the way we do that is by spending time with God on our face in prayer and contrition. Beloved, it is my prayer that the spirit of the living God will speak to your heart as you seek to help develop people to make disciples of Jesus Christ and help people to understand that until we submit to him, until we do what God say do, until we follow God's direction, until we obey him, it is impossible for us to deal with the other issues in our life. We got to define sin and sin, beloved, is outright disobedience, disrespect, and hard heartedness against God. I remember one occasion, uh, our younger son just said, Dad, I just don't want to do it. Well, son, you need, I just don't want to do it. And he was very clear about that. I just don't want to do it. Typical two-year-old, I just don't want to do it. And beloved, that is the sin that resides in our hearts. I pray today that you and I would do a self-examination of our life and really begin to understand that until we define sin and call it what it is, then God can call us to do what we need to do to honor him and to glorify Christ. God, that's my prayer today. Let's pray together as the Holy Spirit of God does an incredible work in your life and in my life and all our lives for the people who've been calling me and emailing me and Facebooking me and all those great things as my team has been informing me about what God is doing. It has been an incredible experience to see the number of people who are now experiencing the awakening power of God. I got a phone call yesterday from a young man who told me, he said, why did you write this book? This is helped me so much. It, I, I went through it too fast. I want more. And that was a blessing to hear that because we need more of God and less of ourselves. Until we define sin and call it what it is, we will not be able to receive the blessings that God has in store for us. Awaken, ignited by the power of prayer. Let's pray together. Father, that is what we want. We want your power. We want to be ignited. We want to be set ablaze. We desire, Father, to truly know you. It is our prayer today that we would be awakened, ignited by the power of prayer that God would do an incredible work, not only in our lives, but the lives of people who are around us, our family, our marriages, our kids, our, our, our loved ones, our communities, our churches, and Father, most importantly, Lord, that you would just deal with our hearts in such a way that we would understand that we are our own worst enemies. We need you, Lord, to help us to deal with our sin. 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. If you say that you've not sinned, you make God out of a lie and the truth of God is not within us. Lord, help us not to do that. Help us to repent, Father, to turn from our sinful ways that we might, Father, walk in fellowship with you, that we might experience that great release and knowing that God is with us. And if God is with us, who can stand against us? Thank you, Father, awakened and knighted by the power of prayer. We ask these things in no other name. Save the name of our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and for Christ's sake, amen. Amen and amen. And as you might remember, one for the Father, one for his Son, and one for his precious Holy Spirit. God bless you and God be with you as you experience this great account of God to be all that God would have you to be, to know all what God would want you to know, and to be the kind of person that is literally ignited and released into the authority of God, that you can be now awakened and ignited by the power of prayer. That is our desire for each and every one of you. God bless you. God keep you on this day.